we're going to be talking about the human senses and senses in general um, in this lecture and set of lectures. And one of the things that I wish I could convey to you is the fascinating aspect of sensation. Now, we were just learning all about nerve cells, right? And <clears throat> nerve cells send out action potentials and action potentials uh, have the ability to carry information and like that, right? But think about it that if we didn't have specially modified nerve cells that were able to take something about the external environment and turn it into an action potential, then we would have no way of knowing that there was a universe outside of ourselves. As a matter of fact, without um, senses, we even would not know the experience of our own body. Um, I think that's, that's kind of cosmic to think about. In addition to that, um, since I'm a veterinarian, right? Uh, you'll hear me talk about the way other animals' uh, senses are different from our own. And it is so, probably the most difficult scientific question to try and answer, which is how does another species experience their reality? How is it different from ours? Um, so I just think they're fascinating. Let me remind you that the nervous system in general is divided up into three things on the exam, okay? So the three things that, uh, sorry, the three things that this nervous system does, one of them is sensory, which is information going into the central nervous system. The job of the sensor, central nervous system is integration, understanding what is being experienced and deciding what action should be taken as a result. And then it is motor. So now we're, we're not just drilling down into sensory in general, we're going to be talking about individual sensory receptors. So uh, sensory sy systems are the means by which an organism receives signal from the external world and also from the internal environment. Another question you're going to need to be able to answer is going to be, how does your body know what your blood pressure is? And when is the time that you should take your next breath? That will also be um, on this next uh, exam. Now, sensory receptors. I told you that it's just a bad habit for physiology and doctors in general uh, to talk about receptors um, when we're actually talking about two different things. So when I say that hormones have receptors on the surface of cells or neurotransmitters have receptors on the surface of cells, um, I really should be saying receptor proteins. Um, sensory receptors, they do happen because of receptor proteins, but when we say sensory receptors, now I'm usually talking about cells, okay? So I apologize for all of us in physiology uh, that we're not clear about those two ideas. Now, sensory receptor cells, they're going to detect some kind of an energy, and we're going to see that there are different energies that can be, quote, detected, by our sensory receptor cells. Uh, but they will do that. They will send out what is like an action potential, but it gets called uh, receptor potentials. Um, anyway, and then uh, that goes into the central nervous system. And then it is up to the central nervous system to uh, perceive, what does that mean? What does that set of action potentials mean? Now, we're going to be talking about different kinds of sensory receptor cells. We're going to be talking about cells that can experience light, like here in the eye, cells that can experience temperature, cells that can experience a flavor, cells that can experience a smell, right? All of those sensory receptor cells, they are different, but whatever they sense, they turn it into an action potential going down a sensory neuron. And all of these sensory neurons and all of these action potentials, they are all the same. So if you just saw something and it's now, oops, 
It's now going down a sensory neuron to your brain. If I were to tap in to that sensory neuron, it would just be an action potential. All action potentials are the same, right? They either happen or they don't. So they're all the same. You do not have big action potentials and little action potentials. The action potentials are all the same. And that means that all of our, all of our sensory neurons, they're just neurons. Their axons send out action potentials. They're all going to be the same. And I very often think about an action potential in this context as kind of like someone who's got um, uh, one of those, you know those clicker things that people used to train animals? You, you press it and it goes click. You can't make high pitch, low pitch clicks. You can't make long and short clicks. You can only make click. That's all, just click, right? That is what sensory receptors are sending. The only uh, way that a sensory neuron has of conveying that the light is very bright or very dim is by how fast those clicks, those action potentials happen. Let's talk about it a little bit more, right? So here we've got basically a modified nerve cell. It's a nerve cell in that it sets up a resting membrane potential, and when it gets enough stimulation, it will have an action potential. They don't call them action potentials when they're receptor, uh, sensory receptor cells, though they call them receptor potentials. They're basically the same thing from our point of view. Now they're going to absorb some kind of energy. What kind of energy? You know, theoretically, any energy in the universe could be uh sensed by some specially modified receptor spell theoretically theoretically we could land on another planet where people can see x-rays and so they can see like all the bones in your body and they would look at you and know if you had a broken bone or arthritis or whatever right theoretically uh we can't uh but theoretically we can are there animals on planet earth that can quite frankly we don't know. It's very difficult to go looking for those things. Could be there's an insect that does. I don't know. Anyway, let's look at this particular animation I put together. And these guys here, oops, these guys here, I am on the wrong thing. That's why. These guys here, these little triangles, they're going to represent sugar molecules. I just ate a cookie and those are sugar molecules and this is going to be a taste bud cell and it is able to sense the presence of sugar so sugar will bind to receptor cells oh dear and that will cause an action potential something went wrong with my animation all right so look if you look at this animation you will notice that uh, the sugar molecules, that they really were very much like, um, very much like a neurotransmitter, right? Gotta, what do I got to do here? I don't know. I got to fix that. They're very much like a neurotransmitter uh, in that when the sugar molecule binds to the receptor, it causes an action potential, well, graded potentials that might cause a receptor potential. So this is one example of how sensory receptors can work. And by the way, our sense of smell uh, works very much like this. Our sense of taste uh, depends on, uh, our sense of tasting sweet very much like this. Yeah, gotta fix that, okay. Now, I want you guys to know that there are different kinds of sensory receptor cells that humans have. The three really important ones that we'll be doing most of our talking about, those three really important ones are mechanoreceptors. Mechanoreceptors, they respond to mechanical forces. So these are receptor cells, right? And mechanoreceptors, if you stretch the cell or if you push on the cell, then that is what will cause them to send out their action potential, right? Now, this is important because chemoreceptors, they don't work that way. Chemoreceptor cells are also really important, but they respond to the presence of chemicals. 
So uh, I can taste sugar with my tongue. If I put sugar on the chemoreceptor cells on my tongue, then that makes them send out action potentials. And then, you know, I'll experience sweet. If I push on them, ah, if I push on them, ain't nothing happening, right? Why? Because they are chemoreceptor cells. Chemoreceptor cells respond to the presence of special chemicals. Mechanoreceptor cells, my sense of touch, they respond to touch and pressure. If I pour sugar on my skin, I do not taste it, right? Because we have got different highly modified cells to experience different energies, right? The third of the really important three are photoreceptor cells, and they respond to electromagnetic energy that is called light. And we'll talk a little bit more about light. Let's see. Now, there are two others that I want you to know. I want you to know thermoreceptors. Thermoreceptors are cells that are highly modified to experience changes in temperature. Now, our thermoreceptor cells, most of our thermoreceptor cells are not uh, good at knowing what exact temperature it is. The thermoreceptor cells in your skin, they know that something touching your skin is warmer or colder than they are but they don't actually, they're not very good at knowing exactly what temperature it is. We do have thermoreceptor cells in the hypothalamus that know it's 98.6 or it's 97.5 or it's 101.2, um, but they're all thermoreceptor cell. They respond to temperature, which is a type of kinetic energy. And then there are these guys. Now, these are called nociceptors. I want you to know them because nociception is the experience of pain. Nociception is the experience of pain. And particularly those of you who are interested in going into the medical field, our, um, our mastery of nociception is still really early in its infancy. You know, the most common pain medications that are used in medicine are drugs that are literally thousands of year old years old. They are opioids. Opioids are uh, were first discovered in plants, and they've been used for thousands of years to suppress our experience of pain. And we are still using, you know, fancier opioids, but still opioids to control pain. The problem with opioids for the control of pain in human health and illness is that they cause um, sedation. Um, and also, they're not that good at some types of pain. Uh, so uh, any of you that have got, uh, that have been part of a family where someone has uh, had a long illness before they died and needed pain relief at the end of their life, you probably are familiar with the idea that the pain medications that we give to end-stage cancer patients really mostly just knock them out and make them sleep. So they don't give our patients a really good quality of life. People who've got chronic pain diseases, very often they can't be employed anymore because their pain medication that's necessary to keep them out of pain makes them not very good at doing work. So we are really studying the field of nociception. Technically, nociception is a subcategory of chemoreception um, but I want you to know what nociceptors are, okay? We are going to pick up here at the beginning of our next lecture.